So now it's time to put together everything we've learned so far about z-scores and how to find them. All right, so we have the following standard normal curve, has areas shaded and labeled. Um, noted the shaded areas are not equal in size. So fill in the three missing values, um, the areas and the z below. Now, I say it's the standard normal curve, but you can actually tell it's the standard normal curve without me having to say it. I mean, for one thing, there's a z there. Once you see a z in it, you know that it's a z curve. A standard normal curve. You can also see that the center is zero, the standard deviation is one, so it makes it really obvious. Okay, so this is a little bit of a puzzle, right? We're going to have to work our way around this graph to figure out what we want to find. So, and it's kind of up to you which way you want to go. But I did just realize there's a typo on this page. <laughs> I always give you two items to start with. I gave you this area up here, and for some reason the z-score down here is missing, but it's given in the problem. It's not a um, thing you have to find. It's just negative 2.350. Sorry about that. I must have um, lost that when I remade the graph <laughs> for the notes this semester. So just put that in. Um, it would always be given. I, I always give two things. So I'll give you two areas or two z-scores or a combination thereof. So in this particular problem, I gave this z-score and this area. So sorry about that. That was a mistake. All right, so that means we have three things that we have to find, and it's a question of which one do you want to find first? And the answer is you can kind of go whichever way you want. I mean, you can't find the middle area yet. That would be the one that you have to wait on, but you could find this Z or you could find this area, no problem. All right, so let's go in the order that we learned them in. So the first thing we learned was how to find areas. So if I look over here, right, we want to find the area or percent or probability from a z-score. We know a z-score, the z-score, sorry about that, is known. It is negative 2.350. So therefore, we could find this area. All right, so let me grab stat crunch. There it is. And now we're going to grab the normal calculator. So stat calculators, normal. OK, so we want the mean to be 0 and the standard deviation to be 1 because this is the standard normal curve. Now, if we look at the sheet, we can see that it says you put your z-scores in here and then it will give you that area, that answer. You're looking for an area. So I have to put the z-score in and then I have to think about which direction I want it to go. And I actually do want it to go less than because it's going to the left. So I'm going to go put in negative 2.350 right here because that's my z-score. And then I want it to be less than because I want it to shade to the left. I'm going to click Compute, and there it is. And notice it more or less looks like what we had on the page. right? And we get that the answer is 0 0.009. They only want three decimal places, so that will be our answer. OK, so the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 2.350 is 0 0.009. Sorry, my pen is dying. I have to grab a new pen. There it is. And this was the answer. Okay, so now we have a choice. Um, we can find the middle area pretty easily because remember that this is a normal curve. It's a probability curve. So the area underneath this normal curve is 1 because probabilities have to sum up to 1. So that means that I could find this middle area by just adding up the two areas that I know and taking it away from 1. So that's what I'm going to do. So this area, I'm just going to put the work right here. It's 1 take away 0 0.009, right, the thing I just found, take away another 0.115. And that's a Desmos problem. So here's Desmos. If I just take 1, take away 0 0.009, take away 0 0.115, I'll get 0.876. So 0.876 is the center. And there we go. So there's that one. All right, that leaves me with the third one, the z-score. Now remember, from our table, when you want to find the z-score from an area, which we know the area, the area that goes with the z-score is 0.115, right? So we know that area, so we're going to put the area in over here, and it will give us the z-score. 
All right, so let's do that. Now keep in mind the direction is going to be different because we want it to be the right hand side, not the left hand side. So I want standard. I'm going to put in my area. My area is 0 0.115, but I want it to be right facing to the right because it's the right hand tail. So there it is. It's 1.200. Okay, so let me write that down. So the probability that z is greater than or equal to 1.200 is 0 0.115, right? It's greater than or equal to because it's going to the right. Oh, my five got all weird. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm not sure I made it any better. <laughs> there we go. I fixed it. So this is the answer right here. It's the 1.200. So this z-score is 1.200. Okay, so now the question um, becomes provide two interpretations of Z1, Z2, and area 2, which is the central bit, in the context of the situation. Now, I just picked the central area essentially, and Z1 and Z2 are the boundaries. So basically, I usually do these either as the left area or the right area or the central area. So I picked the central area, but you know, it works either way. Now, two interpretations is the proportion probability thing. So we learned this back in 7.1. So we want to say the proportion of the entire population. And the context is a little weirder. I say context, but we don't really have a lot of context. <laughs> what we have is z-scores. So we'll just kind of say that. So let me do the proportion way. Proportion. So that would be turning this piece here into a percentage. So you'd say 87.6% of all Z scores fall between negative 2.350 and positive 1.200. I just realized my 1 and my 2 look very similar. That's a 1. That's a 2. That's it. Right? I, we don't have a ton of context here. I'm just trying to get you used to the pattern of how we write these. So that's the proportion way. Let me do the probability way. If a z-score is selected at random, remember this is how these began back in 7.1. Proportion ones usually start off with a percentage because you're thinking of it as the percentage of the whole right, percentage of all the z-scores, and probability is usually thinking about a singleton. So if we select a single random z-score, the probability, or the chances, I don't remember how I wrote it, the chances, probability, whatever. So the probability, the chances, it is between negative 2.350 and one and 1.200 is 0 0.876. It's just reminding us of that thing that we learned at the end of 7.1. It's still holding true even in this section as well. Although context in this particular case is a little weak. I don't really have a lot of context. I was just kind of, the z-scores is the context. All right, I'm actually going to show how to find these values with the TI calculator next. If you're not using a TI calculator, then you can just skip ahead to the next video, which I imagine will be most of you. All right, TI calculator folks. So the answer to um, how to find these depends on which calculator you have as before. So if you have the newer calculator, it's a lot easier. You can just go to second distribution say you want um, this particular one would be normal CDF, right? So you'd use normal CDF. That's right here. It tells you normal CDF, lower and upper. So I'd grab normal CDF. The lower is negative 1E99 because it's negative infinity. Then I type negative 2.350, 0 and 1, paste, enter. And we get 0 0.009. Simple as that. All right, so that's pretty easy on, on the old calculators as well as the new calculators. That's kind of 
standard. Um, the 0.876 is easy, no problem. The one that's more difficult in the old calculator is the one on the right, the z-score. So that's an inverse norm problem. So we hit number three, inverse norm. And we say this area is 0 0.115. And then we're going to tell it the right because it's the area in the right tail. And then we paste and press enter and there it is. Now if you don't have that calculator, if we have the old calculator, I'll show you what to do. But things are more difficult for you. You have to find the area in the two left bits, right? Everything to the left. So you take 0 0.009 plus 0 0.876 and you add them together and you're going to get 0.885, which right here. So then you go to second distribution, you hit inverse norm just like before, but you have to tell it 0.885 because it automatically thinks that it's the left tail, right? There's no option of left center right here, so I have to do left no matter what, and the left of that is 0.885. You can also get that from taking 1 minus 0.115 if you wanted to do that. That would work as well. It would get you 0.885 and then that's the area. Basically, the old calculators are always left. They don't have the left, center, right option. So you have to accommodate for that. Everything else is the same.